Well, she's active. I also acquired a reading buddy. <laughs> this weekend I'm reading Death in Provence and I don't end up being happy about it. It is 8.37 on Friday night and a girl is making some cinnamon rolls. Cause I want cinnamon rolls. Hi, do you like cinnamon rolls? I wish I could transport you into my kitchen. I've got some orange zest grated into the sugar. That's gonna be very yummy. I've started my like weekend baking. The thing I haven't done yet is actually start to read. The first book that I'm reading is Death in Provence by Serena Ken. And that is the uh, pen name for a husband and wife who write together and they live in Provence. I've lived in Provence, so I'm kind of looking forward to that. First things first though, I do need to start my dough so that I can read during the like two two hours that it's gonna proof. So let's hop over and do that. So I realize at this point in the process, we are literally just like butter, sugar, and orange zest, but like it good, it real good. And we're going in for the one hand. Maybe, I think I missed it. Still not used to vlogging yet. So fluffy. So this definitely says not recommended for recipes that call for instant or quick rise yeast, but you know what? I'm just gonna go with it. That doesn't work with only one hand. Add some yeast food. Penelope Kite stood at the door of her dream home and wiped her brow with the back of her hand. The late morning heat had brought the air to a steamy simmer. August was a hot flash that never subsided. The protagonist in this novel is named Penelope. She's from England, looking to move to Provence. She's going to look for this old like farmhouse and she's viewed one that the real estate agent she's gone through thinks is perfect for her. And look at this. It's old and in need of attention, but it could be brought back to life. You know that like, we're talking about the farmhouse, but we're also kind of talking about Penelope. Oh my God, my yeast! Well, she's active. I'm trying to convert ounces to cups and I'm a little bit of a math moron, so I'm kind of hoping I'm doing this right. If not, it might be interesting. Mother hecker, I forget how many cups of flour I was on. It is already 10 o'clock. I have gotten like eight pages read and I'm still at the add flower stage. I'm gonna throw on the Penumbra podcast because it comes highly recommended and I listened to the first like two episodes. So I'm gonna jump into some more of that. Booktubers, where are you putting your cameras? Tell me your secrets. Uh, secrets a tripod, but I don't have one of those. I remember how much flour I put in because I don't know if that's right. We are mixing this on medium low speed until just combined. Is that what I have? Tell me your ways, Babish. Okay, so I'm at this part where we're like finally describing how old she is. Penelope is 50 and she was proud that she had not yet found a strand of gray. Bitch, I have gray. I am 23 years old and I have gray. <laughs> Good night, bread. It's 10.43. Where does the time go? Who knows? Maybe I live in a pocket dimension. Now that I effectively have a catastrophe on my hands, I am going to have to put reading on hold, do a little bit of kitchen pickup, maybe put the Penumbra podcast back on. Update, I know I said I was gonna do Penumbra podcast, but Shipper's Guide to the Galaxy is streaming, so like, we're gonna watch that instead. I felt like prey before a predator. An unnerving flicker in my peripheral vision gave me the sense I was being watched. It's been about two hours, let's check on this guy the bounce back is good if you push it springs right back since this seems like about as good a time as any maybe i'll take a minute to talk about why i'm so interested in reading this book set in provence i'm not usually a murder mystery kind of gal my motivation is twofold one the book is in my house but also as i mentioned previously my family and i lived in the south of france in aix-en-provence for a year my mother is a teacher and she was studying at the university of aix it was my grade nine year i was 14 turning 15. Oh, precarious. I already spoke French. I'm from Canada, so I grew up going to school in a French immersion program. I just kind of love the atmosphere in Provence. It's beautiful. I actually went back uh, last winter, right around Christmas time, to go to some of the Christmas markets. I was reading a bit on the back of the book, just the about the author, and they live in Provence, so it should be a very authentic take. And since I'm not going back there this winter, I would like to go back, but you know, in book form. It's not as expensive that way. Look at it! That's gonna 
be a whole heck of a lot of cinnamon buns. Moment of truth. Let's cut this thing. Look at it. You guys. Oh, these are going to be so good. My babies. Quarter to 2 a.m. I did start making these cinnamon rolls at quarter to 9. Why it took me that long? Who knows? And you know how much reading I got done in the meantime? Like, eight pages. Good night, buddies. See you in the morning. Also, this fridge smells like a French fromagerie, and it's entirely because, like, cheese was on sale. So I bought all of it. Yes, I'm coming. Just let me finish brushing my teeth. All right, so house code is off. Eyebrows are off. BuzzFeed Unsolved merch is on. Puppy is snuggled in. Say hi, Lavender. Hello. Being as we're already like 10 after 2, I think I'm going to pick up Death in Provence again and just see if I can get to the end of the chapter before going to bed. Oh, bless you. See, I'll see you in the morning, puppy. Oh, five more minutes. No, don't lick me. I'm just trying to cuddle. Ooh, this is not good lighting. Hold on. So I decided to put the cinnamon rolls in a warm oven to proof a little bit more. All right, time to make some frosting. cinnamon rolls are out of the oven. Next order of business is to pour myself a coffee. I got a cold brew for like two bucks. It was on sale. So now that it's like almost lunchtime, I finally have my cinnamon roll ready to go. I'm camped out with my cinnamon roll and my coffee. I got this mug at Disneyland in Paris for my brother as a Christmas gift, but he and my mom are living in China this year. So like, it's free real estate. I do feel like it would be wrong if I didn't like blog the first bite. Here we go. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's so good. Good job, me. Excuse the poor lighting, but like, can you see the layers on that thing? So I guess that was four cups of flour. Good to know. But yeah, now on to the reading. Update, I'm on page 27. I also acquired a reading buddy. Hi, Lavender. I'm not like totally sucked into it yet. It could just be because I'm not a mystery novel person, but it is like really atmospheric. The descriptive text is well done. I just want to point out how like accurate this line of dialogue is but une semaine peut-être deux madame it's so like but is definitely a kind of um in i don't know if it's all of france but in provence anyway definitely brings me back i'm on page 33 now and i just keep bumping on the french and english both being used in the book i really like that the characters are speaking french because it's really realistic and sometimes the author nails how like french first language people who are speaking english speak but then like this sentence i have spoken to le maire he's coming down now and then the main character goes the mayor there's times when you'd use french in a sentence if it's applicable but i don't know of any french person who is said to speak english as well as this person does who would use le maire in a sentence in English. Or like, this. This is so good. It must be done. But le maire de Saint-Merlo, you will want to meet him. He is sympa. When I was going to school, like, everything was sympa. Everyone was sympa. It's kind of like the way you'd use cool like oh yeah they're cool they're chill like that's sampa it's quarter to one i just landed on chapter six which is about 60 pages in i'm starting to get a little nippy so i'm gonna go and get some stuff for some lunch i think i'm gonna do up a little charcuterie board with some meats and cheeses and i bought some olives and uh get a little Provencal myself. So charcuterie board's coming along. I have beamster cheese and then there's some bocconcini that I just have some olive oil, salt, pepper, and a bit of balsamic vinegar, some mixed olives, and then I gotta open the oka cheese. It's demi ferme, so it's semi-soft surface ripened cheese from Quebec, yeah. So it's a Quebecois cheese. I see the commercials for it all the time. I don't know that I've had it. So I'm excited to get into that. And then there's some extra creamy Danish blue cheese. Uh, I already sharded off some Parmesan and uh, Genoa salami, prosciutto. I have some fruit and stuff too that I'll put together. So I will come back to this once it's more together. I bought some Muscat beauty grapes. They're imported from Spain. I feel like people need to know that I spent like almost seven bucks on this many grapes. And I do it again. They're delicious. Oh my God. And here is the final product. Woohoo! I have some uh, extra strong brewed black tea with apricot that I'll top off with some Perrier. My dad doesn't like blue cheese, so I put it on some parchment so it wouldn't get on the cutting board. Uh, Asian pear, oka, which is very good. My regular grapes, my fancy grapes, a sour cherry jam. It's PC Black Label brand, it's very good. Some nectarines. Uh, Parmesan and then an assortment of crackers and some fresh toasted bread. Best bite so far is nectarine, blue cheese, and prosciutto. Very good. So my cat found me with my food. Yeah, 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 yeah. Would you chill out? I'm getting it for you. It's a quarter to four. I'm just shy of a third of the way. I think that if it wasn't 
for the setting, I would be enjoying it a lot less than I am. So it's sort of like those travelogue movies where, you know, the plot's just kind of whatever and you're there for the scenery. That's kind of my takeaway from it. The main character, Penelope, is a bit passive. Like things are just happening to her. I would hope that by this point in the novel, the character would be more actively engaged. Dog, one second. As I was saying, we migrated downstairs. They get very like dried, cracked heels. So I'm gonna do a little foot soak, try to moisturize and all that jazz. And I'll do some reading while they soak. I'm a hundred pages in. And I realized the other thing that's bothering me about this book. One thing, there's a lot of like weird body shamey stuff happening and I don't know if that's so that the character will have an arc where she like settles into herself or if that's just gonna be like the general backdrop of the novel. I don't know. It's kind of like, if they're going somewhere with it then I'm on board but if not then like I don't feel like it has to be there. But the other thing that's bothering me, the main character is like not suspicious enough of people. There's weird stuff with the mayor and there's weird stuff with her like real estate agent. It's not like I've already guessed who did it. But it does seem to me like she's not making any kind of guesses about who did it and she's not coming up with theories. She's just kind of finding evidence and passing it along and like waiting for other people to do stuff with it. Her friend is the one who points out that somebody's acting kind of suspicious. It's fun, it's breezy, it's entertaining, um, but it hasn't gotten me like hooked yet so I'll have to see going forward if that changes. It is six o'clock and my feetsies are all bundled up. I have switched back to my house coat because I got it at Walmart for like under 20 bucks and it's the comfiest thing. So I'm gonna live in it now. I didn't even have to go anywhere. Why did I put clothes on? It is still daylight out. I might migrate out onto the deck and read a bit more. You ready to go outside? Harold's outside. Okay. Hi, Harold. Harry. Hi, buddy. Hi. Hello. Lavender. Do you have a ball? All right, let's see how many pages I can get into Death in Clavals before like, you know, someone absconds. Ha <laughs> ha Best puppy! <gasps> Wait! No! Lavender! Yeah! That's a big ball for a little puppy! You have it? <gasps> Ooh! Big ball! It's getting chilly. I'm getting chilly. Puppy is... How do I get her in the shop? Puppy's back there. I think I might head in. I'm hoping to get halfway done. I'm still like only this far into the book. But I'm hoping to get halfway done so that I can finish the book tomorrow and then do like one book for the weekend. Come on in! <laughs> Good puppy! It is 8.30, and just in case anyone was curious of how much farther along I am, uh, yeah, I'm still at like 100 pages because this kind of fell out of favor for this. Unsolved. Reading. Unsolved. And also, I think the three hours that I slept last night is starting to catch up with me, so I'm also like kind of sleepy, and I don't really feel like reading a book I'm not enjoying. Just for those who are curious, no, this is not my natural hair color, but yes, these are my natural curls, and like, they just don't know how to all do the same thing, huh? Comfy sweater is on, eyebrows are off, not that they were ever on, it's a weekend, I'm not putting on eyebrows. Uh, I'm going to read a little bit more of Death in Provence. So the more I read in this book, the better I'm able to put words to what is like not 100% clicking for me. When is Penelope gonna figure anything out for herself? No, how on earth could you know that? She blurted it all out. By page 109, you should hope that your protagonist has taken some kind of like decisive action to do something instead of just like following along with whatever's happening. This piece of information her friend tells her because her friend is fluent in French. From what I can understand, like she was present when the friend was finding this out and was like having this discussion to get this piece of information, this clue. But the thing is, nowhere was it written really that Penelope was watching this secret be divulged even like if there had been something about like Penelope observing that like her friend and this woman seemed to be having this conversation that was scandalous or secretive so that when this comes up Penelope doesn't even ask about it the friend just like spontaneously brings it up even if Penelope had been like hey so I noticed you talking about this thing with her, could you tell me what is going on? Could you be my translator? Like if she took the initiative to be curious, but she just never really does. Girl, you're in a mystery novel. Try to solve the mystery. Also, if I have to sit through one more passage about these women rhapsodizing about Rosé, I am like gonna lose my mind. At this point, they're just drinking so often and it's coming up so much that it's either 
plot relevant, which could actually kind of be cool, or it's just like repetitive and tired. Back on this whole best friend thing, not for the first time, Penelope wondered how Frankie did it. She had found out more than 10 minutes than Penelope could have ever done. So like, why isn't Frankie the protagonist then? I'm gonna read you a passage and it's not to like be negative, but I just need you to understand what I mean when I'm talking about stuff not being written out as much as it should be. They were approaching a sharp bend opposite the cherry orchard when suddenly the red Mini Cooper scorched past them. Penelope had a second to register the lady driver's pinched expression before she was pushed with some force into the ditch at the side of the road. Frankie fell on top of her, still with her hand on Penelope's back. Are you all right? Penelope said, gasping. Yes, are you? I think so. Not one of our more elegant maneuvers. Crumbs, Frankie, that was close. I think you just saved my life. Why is that the extent of your reaction to almost getting hit by a car? Nobody's heart is in their throat. Nobody's pulse is thundering. Nobody's life is flashing before their eyes. You had to dive into a ditch to avoid being hit by a car. That should matter. And it doesn't. The drama of this should last longer than a third of a page. The next paragraph shouldn't say that you check yourself over and dust yourself off. What? Okay, so I didn't make it quite to the halfway point, but it's... 20 after 11 and there's a pup in the bed so I'm gonna call it a night. Hi. Oh where are you going? Under the blankies? Oh, okay. <coughs> Morning voice. Hi. So it's 20. Yeah it's just not gonna get better. Hi. So it's 20 after 9. I uh, let the dog out. I gotta go feed the animals and then it's really just like crack down read the book time. Are you waiting to be fed? Oh hi. Would you like some food? Finally arrived at about the halfway point and finally Penelope is starting to take initiative in doing the mystery solving and actually proactively looking into things which is a welcome change from what it's been for the first half. Also it totally cracks me up that this is a couple that wrote this because like most of the theme of this book is like marriage sucks and men are trash so put on my fuzzy house coat. Do you want to go outside again? <laughs> is one o'clock. I made some quick egg drop soup. And then I wanted to show you, uh, this whole table is like pictures of when we were living in Provence. So that's me on our terrace. There's uh, my brother in Venice. That was our bakery that we always went to. It was like a minute down the road. There's us in X in front of this big arch. It's where the Hotel de Ville was. So that's us, my dad, my brother and me. And uh, that's the door to our apartment. And the view. Pretty cool. It's three o'clock. I have a third left. Um, it's finally getting interesting, but I can't keep sitting here and reading it. It's <laughs> not been interesting enough to not have worn me out of it. So what I am going to do is I think draw a bath, maybe do a bit of reading. Um, so let's go do that. I mean, yeah, you do you. Got the hair up, I just got it dyed on Thursday night, so I don't wanna like saturate it with water. I just wanna sit in my bath and enjoy my bath. So I'm gonna do that. How many times in one vlog can you end up in the same house coat challenge? I haven't even had supper yet. I don't know why I'm doing this. I keep feel grimy. Seven rolls. It's quarter after five. I know you're probably asking, huh? What else did you get up to since we saw each other last? But no, no, just the bath. That's how I operate. I managed to get another couple of chapters read though, which was nice. The only thing I didn't do was my face mask. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. So we're coming up to what I'm expecting to be an actually exciting conclusion to this book. I was very dubious before this because it was just so slow to get into. But I think now that like more and more things are coming to light, this should actually be interesting. You know, at like a third of the way before the book is over. There's a couple of characters in this book. You know that one of them is there to actually be the killer and the rest are just red herrings. But it's trying to figure out like which ones. And honestly, once the reveal comes, it's also figuring out which ones like you'd actually care if they were double crossing the main character. You know what I mean? Like some of them are just not even insufferable. It's just like they're kind of flat characters. Toner or serum, I don't do that. Oh yeah, I do. Wait, where's my physician's formula? So many of the characters are like threading that line of being suspicious that when the reveal finally comes around, I don't know if I like or trust any of them enough that it's gonna matter that they've 
betrayed her. And I'm also trying to put my finger on if whether the fact that I have been to Provence and lived in the area makes the book more enjoyable or less enjoyable. Because to me, the parts where the book shines are all of the description about Provence and the area and what it's like to live there and like the culture and the way of life. And I can't tell if I like them so much because I know that experience and I'm remembering that experience or if it's something that like anybody who picks up the book and read it would like. Oh my god, what? Let's try to wrestle it on. I hate this. I'm gonna have like mask juice in my eye by the end of this. And I mentioned it before in my like before bed catch up. Not to say that there's not a very prevalent drinking culture in the south of France. It's just like, man, if there isn't some big payoff at the end that the, the drinking matters, it's just at that point like so repetitive. And oh, my face is like too small for the size of this thing. But yeah, if it does turn out that like the drinking has nothing to do with the mystery, then it's just way too repetitive. Actually, it's funny because a lot of the things that I'm like bumping on as I'm reading it are one of those things that I'm like, man, any decent beta reader should have told you that this is a problem. Like I've been in creative workshopping rooms before. Some of the feedback I have, like you've got a really passive main character and a lot of repetitive things happening and the stakes aren't actually all that high. All of these things are things that like somebody should have brought up to the authors. Maybe they were, I don't know, this is where I like examine the publishing side of things as somebody who wants to be published. <laughs> I don't know if I can move my face from here. Hey Siri, set a timer for 20 minutes. I'm really washed out in this lighting. That's not better. As I was saying, as somebody who wants to be published, I think a lot about like what is motivating publishers to accept what novels. I wonder if they were more concerned about selling the novel on the merit of like the travelogue aspect and assuming that like the setting in Provence would entice people to read it more than like the quality of the work was important if that makes sense. That does seem like the part of the narration is most focused on capturing that like Provencal mood and it like the feeling of being Provence. I keep slipping into my mouth. That aspect seems to be more important than the, the mystery elements. It's coming up on six o'clock. That sat for 20 minutes. I don't know what difference it did. It's kind of uncomfortable, actually. I don't know that I'll get this again. It's got like a scratchy side. I'm assuming whatever stitching it is that keeps the mask together and you can like feel it against your face versus like the top side is really smooth. So either I wouldn't use it again or like I'd put it, mm, no, I think whatever side you put down, you still feel it. So I don't know if I'd get this again. But as I was saying, it's coming up on six o'clock and I need to do some kind of supper thing. I was gonna say I'll read in the meantime, but that's probably not feasible, but we'll see. Thanks. I hate it. So this book was not good. It wasn't bad. It's fine. It's very atmospheric. You definitely feel like you're in Provence. The bits of dialogue in French and English are about as well done as they probably can be. I, I can't imagine other ways of doing this that would work better, although it does remind me that I've always kind of wanted to have a book that is bilingual, that doesn't have English explanations and that you have to be bilingual to read. I just think the concept of a book like that is kind of cool. It's one of these books that like, I really just wish the main character did something. Even at the end in that big wrapping up the mystery where everything is like being explained and she's like taking all this credit for all these discoveries and people are like giving her pats on the back for all this stuff that she found out and I'm like bitch you found out nothing. At every step along the way people are just consistently telling her stuff. She learns independently almost nothing. The only things that she does learn could have been learned by somebody else. She is at no point instrumental in this investigation and yet they really make her out at the end of the book to have been this great big help. This would have been fine without her which is a problem. You should never look at your main character's contributions to the story and be like yeah this would have been okay if you weren't there. Also she's just like really unlikable and all of the things about her that were unlikable at the beginning of the book that I was hoping were gonna get better got worse. All of the weird like body shamey bits that were at the beginning are just worse. I don't know I don't like it. I haven't decided if I'm gonna give it two or three stars on Goodreads but like my personal assessment is like 2.5 stars. There's a point in the climax when she figures out who, it's not even, she doesn't figure it out, it just she stumbles upon. Her internal monologue is like, 
oh, I didn't see this coming. How did I miss the signs? Or maybe there were no signs. When you have to write that, oh, maybe there were no signs into your narrative, you messed up. If you can't confidently say, ha, huh, the clues were there all along, and my main character and the reader should have picked up on them, then you did it wrong. I don't mean to rag on this book. If you enjoy it, that is totally fine. If you're somebody who's looking for just this escapist, like, journey to Provence that has mild intrigue, yeah, this is great. At least with this book, there are a lot of places where I see what the problem is, which is always better than, like, when you just kind of generally don't like a book and you can't put your finger on why. I find that super annoying. There's, like, very clear reasons as to why I wasn't so into this, and I think that makes it less a matter of personal taste and more a matter of actually being a narrative flaw. So it is rapidly coming up on midnight and I have to work tomorrow so I am gonna call the vlog here. Hopefully I'll do one of these again. I do have an order coming in for Spookathon which should be fun. So thank you so much for watching this vlog. It is my very first so let me know kind of how you feel about it, if you like it, if you don't, what you'd like to see from the channel. I'd like to do some more reading vlogs, maybe some writing vlog stuff, cooking stuff. Just let me know in the comments down below anyway and if you like my content maybe subscribe to my channel. That's everything from me. Until next time, I don't have a sign off. Okay, bye! <laughs>